I'm Aubrey Bailing and this is Betsy Kellogg and today we're on a mission to find the yummiest, freshest vegetables in Simsbury. Yes, it's summer now and the growing season is getting into full swing. We want to learn how we can add more locally grown fruit foods into our diet. We are very fortunate to have so many local farms in Simsbury and the surrounding towns to choose from. Today we're going to tour George Hall Farm to, to meet our, far our local farmer and get to know our food. Oh, I can't wait to meet a farmer. It's pretty cool that he's doing something as important as growing our food. Yes, and farming's fun. Think about it. Plant seeds in the litter, add water, and voila, vegetables. Pretty amazing, right? I don't know, Betsy. I think there's a little more to it than that. Yeah, probably. Let's go find out. So we're here at George Hall Farm on Old Farms Road in Simsbury, Connecticut. George Hall began farming on his property in 1963. Farming was in his blood. He was a fourth generation farmer. George Hall Farm became one of the first certified organic farms in Connecticut in 1979. Organic farming? What's that? Organic refers to the way agricultural products are grown and processed. It means that no harmful fertilizers, pesticides, or chemicals are used on the plants. Oh, so that means organic farming is better for us and the environment. Yes, that's right. Wow, it sounds like George Hall was a pioneer in organic farming. He was. He influenced many young farmers in New England and taught them how to farm organically. Hi girls, what's going on? Uh, Hi, Darren. Not much. Uh, yeah, we're just checking out your crops. How do they look? Uh, they look pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting. Making me find, hungry. Finding you two out in my fields today. Are you guys applying for a job today? Um, sadly, no. <laughs> um, this is Darren Hall, the current owner of George Hall Farm and nephew of George Hall. We were just talking about your uncle, George Hall. Can you tell us a little about him and what he taught you about farming? Yeah, George. I grew up grew up over here. I started coming around here when I was about 10 or 12 years old, maybe nine years old. Um, he, my uncle always had a little bit of cash in his pocket. So during the springtime when we were, we were still riding our bikes, we would bike over here after school and help him plant tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that. And that was before we had all kinds of machinery to do that. We used to have to do it all by hand. So you get on your hands and knees and you'd crawl across this field from where we're filming from all the way down to the other end where those trees are and then we would crawl all the way back planting tomatoes and peppers and things like that so so we're here right now in a high house um surrounded by a bunch of kale what kinds of food do you grow on your farm we grow we grow vegetables on our farm all kinds of vegetables a to z arugula to zucchini what's it like to be an organic farmer and what does that even mean that's a lot of questions in one mouthful. It's kind of neat being an organic farmer. We were one of the first organic farms in the state of Connecticut back in the early, the late 70s, 78, 79. And George saw some, some stuff going on with his parents when they were dying of cancer 10 years prior to that. And that's when he switched over to start raising stuff organically. And then we started, you know, cause I grew up over here on this farm. I started coming around here when I was eight or nine years old and started watching the practices that he was doing and continued that into my adult life and having just taken over the farm here in the last couple of years um, we're going to continue that tradition for as long as we can thank you um how large is your farm we're right now we're farming about 100 acres 125 acres somewhere in that range some of it's in crop rotation some of it's out of production so we use the whole 125 and we rotate our crops different crops in different fields and that helps keep the um, pressures down for both from weeds and from bugs and we don't tend to we tend not to have as many diseases as some of your conventional growers because we're not growing one crop in the same spot continuously for years on end um, depleting the soil of nutrients and, and valuable minerals. Uh, is it true that you have another field like elsewhere than at the farm here at Hall's Farm? Yes, we rent a couple different pieces of ground. We rent some from the town of Simsbury and we also rent some from the McLean Game Refuge. And then we have an, another field that we own, which is on the other side of town, closer to the home farm where my grandfather uh, had bought a farm could got, I don't know, in the 1920s or 30s. And that was where George grew up, was on, on Terry's Plains Road, right across from the Joe Hall farm. 
Do you have any kids working here at Hall's Farm? I have three of my own children working here. Twenty, there a couple of them are older. One of them just started driving recently, and then we also hire uh, high school kids right out of Simsbury High School, and I've got a couple working from Avon also. And they come in, they work about four hours a day, and uh, we try and get them early in the morning when they're still bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, what is the easiest thing to grow on the farm, and then what is the hardest? The easiest thing to grow on our, our farm are our weeds. We grow a great crop of weeds every single year. The hardest thing to grow is the vegetables that we try and sell because the weeds grow 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They never stop. They don't need nitrogen. They don't need potassium. They don't need any of the minerals that the plants we're trying to grow for market do. So the vegetables are actually very difficult to grow because there's so much work involved with uh, pulling weeds and, and making sure the nutrients are, are right for the plants to help them grow. Um, why are you a farmer? No, oh, I'm just educated. I grew up. I grew up farming. I was born. I was born into the family. A family of farmers. I think George was either the fourth or fifth generation farmer. And um, it's. I knew from the time I was two years old that this is what I wanted to do. I was walking across my grandfather's barnyard, dragging a sledgehammer, and I knew right then and there that that's what I wanted to do. And that's. I've been fighting to to stay with it all these years. Um, do you have any animals on your farm? We have a large. A, not a big variety of animals, but we do have um, we have a couple, three, four hundred. I think there's four hundred chickens here, or three hundred and fifty chickens. And we use those for egg production. I have two different flocks. I have a two-year-old flock and a one-year-old flock. The yearlings are just starting to lay now. Um, with egg production on our farm, we have a two-year cycle on our chickens. So at the end of two years, in the fall, when they stop laying, then we send them off to to wherever used chickens go. And then we get another flock in in the springtime. We just got in some baby ducklings the other day, so there's a, there's about 30 of those running around here somewhere. We've got some full-size ducks here that we're getting eggs from. Duck eggs are a little harder. We, out of the two ducks we have, we get an egg about every 36 to 40 hours, somewhere in that range. And then we have four steers here, and steers are um, boy cows, and I have Two of them are trained oxen, so I use those in, in our production when we're cultivating in between rows of steak tomatoes. I don't have a tractor tall enough to go over the tomato steaks. So we hitch the oxen up and we drive up and down the rows with a, with a horse-drawn cultivator behind them to help keep the weed pressure down. And then there's two more that are black and white who were supposed to be trained as oxen, but I think they're going to become hamburger. Can we go see some of the animals? Sure. When do you want to go? Mr. Duck, how do you like living on Hall's Farm? Interesting. you have to be to be an intern at the farm? We start our interns who are not related to us at 14. If you're related to us, you start from the time you're born and you continue on throughout your whole entire life, whether you want to be part of it or not. Oh, what is your favorite vegetable? My favorite vegetable are our tomatoes. We raise some really nice tasting tomatoes here. The heirloom varieties that we've been raising for probably 15 years now. Um, the German Stripe, the Brandywine, or the Cherokee Purple. Any one of those three is a really, really good tomato. And I love cucumbers, too. Cucumbers are like my favorite. Um, where can we find some of your products that you sell? 
We are currently in about, involved with about 12 to 14 farmers markets around the Farmington Valley and further out. We're, we're over in South Windsor, we're down in New Haven a couple days a week, we're in East Windsor. I go down to Shelton, I've got a couple CSA members down there and they have a farmers market on Wednesday. We're right here in town at the Simsbury Farmers Market, we're in Farmington at the library at their farmers market that they're just starting this year. Um, so we're kind of scattered out all over the place. And I also, we, we supply some of the local restaurants here in town. Uh, 2T over in Terrafil, we supply a little bit of stuff to them. And we also supply stuff to Millwrights right here in, in, by the high school here in Simsbury. And I think we're involved with the raw, we, we are involved with the Raw Food Institute here in town too. And, and they have a really great um, program that they run. And we, we supply a good portion of the organic produce for that. What is your favorite animal on the farm? My favorite animal are my oxen. I really like my oxen. It started off as a hobby for me when we started building these high tunnels. We have five of them or four of them here on this farm. And when we first put the first ones up, I thought, well, we're going to be working inside. We're going to be covered in plastic. There won't be a lot of ventilation in here. So maybe we should you find an alternative alternative mode of transportation in here. So we, we I had trained oxen when I was young, a youngster with my grandfather, probably six, seven years old. We started training them. And so I said, well, you use the oxen inside the greenhouses for cultivation and plowing and things like that. So that's how <clears throat> that's why the oxen are my favorite. They're kind of a hobby for me. Are there any other uh, local restaurants or food things you sell to? There is one that I forgot to mention. We also are part of the Farmington Valley Montessori School down in Avon. And they rent half, well, one third of one of my greenhouses and they graze stuff during the winter time and they take it to their school. And they, the kids that are working on that project actually have a little farmer's market down there every Friday where they, everything that they grew in my greenhouses, they take down there and sell it to their parents and whoever else happens to walk in. Interesting. Um, what does growing organic mean? Well, growing organic means you're raising stuff without using chemical pesticides, herbicides, or um, or um, fertilizers on it. And it also means that you're paying attention to what the plant is looking for as far as its nutrient requirements and how you go about uh, bringing, bringing the uh, plant along. We use a lot of compost. You can see in this greenhouse, we have a pretty nice looking batch of kale in here right now it's starting to turn a little yellow because I haven't watered it and it's just about at the end of its life cycle and what we'll do with this is when this when this house is just about done we'll move our young chickens up in here and they'll clean up all the kale leaves that are in here and then they'll scratch around in the in the um, leaves and stuff and they'll start stirring up some of the soils in here and then that will help start to re remineralize and re, re um, fertilize what's inside the greenhouse so that's we all you use those types of methods to kind of um, make our crops grow. Um, I see like three or four kinds of kale in here. Could you name them? I can. Can you? So over here to my right, against the outside of the greenhouse, we have what's known as a Russian kale. That's a flat leaf kale. It works really well in smoothies. And I like raising it because this that kale right there will grow at about 26 degrees. It actually grows while it's freezing outside. And in here, it takes the, night, the temperatures at night. Uh, it's one of my faster growing kales. It does not like the heat. Once you get above a certain temperature with that kale, it stops growing completely. This one right here is the Latticino kale or dinosaur kale. And that's uh, depicted by this dinosaur looking skin and it kind of looks like a little dinosaur there doesn't it and then the one just to my left is is green curly kale and that's the one that everybody's most familiar with you see that a lot of grocery stores you see that on a lot of farm stands we also raise one more which i don't see in here and that's a red curly kale and the it's they bred the red uh, red gene into it. So now you have a, a green kale that's got a little bit of red in it that gives you a little bit more um, vitamins and minerals because of the redness of the um, the color in it, or because of the color purple. Um, so does everything here on the farm have a purpose? Yes, everything on the farm has a purpose. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what that purpose is, but at some point it, it will come back into play 
You know, you look around and you see some modern tractors around here, you see some modern equipment, but you also see stuff that's horse-drawn that once goes dates back to the early 1900s, late 1800s, and we're still using that stuff today. We use we mix that into what we're doing. I have a lot of because we've been doing this for so long, I have a lot of tools available to me depending on what my crop is asking me for. Um so well, I've been um, tasting some of the kale, and it tastes really like good and rich. Is that like yeah, fresh? Is that something that like you do, or? Mother Nature actually makes the kale grow for me. I just kind of help it along and try and try and give it everything that she's asking me to give it to. But you're also picking kale that's very fresh. When you buy when you buy local from local growers, you're getting stuff that is anywhere from. 20 seconds old like the two girls are eating right here on us or within a 24 to 48 hour time cycle when you buy stuff from the grocery store it sits in various warehouses from the time the farmer picks it it sits in his warehouse over say 8 to 12 hours then it goes on a truck wherever it's trucked in from or an airplane which a lot of stuff is flown in uh, for us now you don't know, you know, that stuff could be a week old before you guys get it at the store, you get it into your own house, and then it sits in your refrigerator for a couple more days. So by the time you get around eating some kale, it could be two weeks old. So that's why when you when you come to the farm and you, you're eating stuff right off the plant, it has a completely different flavor to it because it's still alive and it's still kicking. Um. I, we we were just tasting some kale, and Betsy was right. It tastes very fresh. And um, what what kale seems I, I can't really tell, but to you, like over the years, what kind of kale has like you know been like grows easiest and you get most of. The the two we started with green kale years ago. I mean, I we're looking. I'm looking back probably 25 to 30 years ago. We started raising kale, and back then nobody knew what kale was. It was kind of a it, it was used a lot on salad bars for decoration over the ice. So you you put a layer of kale out on a, a salad bar, and then you put cucumbers and tomatoes and peppers and things like that that people are very familiar with, and then all of a sudden. They, somebody did some some testing on this kale and then they realized how valuable it was as far as calcium and, and nutrients and things like that that are in there, the vitamins and minerals that are in there. And now kale is considered a superfood, which means you get an awful lot of your daily vitamins right out of a kale leaf. So what grows like seasonally in like, so what's your main crop in like spring, summer, winter, fall, what are they? Well, that's an awful lot to cover in one one sentence here. What we um, we have a planting cycle. I the the nice thing about what we're doing here this in the last ten years or so is we when we put our high tunnels up, it allowed us to plant stuff that you wouldn't normally find here in New England. But going back to what you originally asked was what is what what's local and what's seasonal and how that plays an effect in what you're doing. In the old days, when I was your age. In the springtime, you got uh, asparagus, you got lettuce, you got Swiss chard, and the lettuce would, would run out sometime in <clears throat> mid-July or so, and then the Swiss chard would kick in, and Swiss chard is a, so, what the, the old timers used to call it summer lettuce because it grows much better during the hot weather than it does during the cold weather. Beets and carrots, another one, they you, we plant those very early. <laughs> So they come in around the middle of July, beginning of August, so and they can take some, some cold weather. Lettuce lettuce takes cold weather pretty good. Early broccoli, um, a lot of the cucurbits, which are, um, are not cucurbits, brassicas, which are your kales, your collards, your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, all that stuff. We plant two, two crops of a lot of that. We'll do a spring crop as early as we can get on the ground without doing damage to the ground because the soil temperatures need to be at a certain temperature in order for that those crops to grow. So we, we plant two crops. That way we can harvest one crop and then we get over the hot spots of summer, July and August and part of September. And then we start doing the fall stuff with that. And then that's when it, you know, that's when it kind of kicks in corn, tomatoes, cucumbers, all that is warm weather crop. So, you know, you, as you go through the seasons, things change. Blueberries come in a little bit later. So there's a, there's a whole slew of stuff that takes place. Well, um, thank you for answering those questions that we had. 
We want to give a special thanks to Darren Hall, the, who let us come out here and tour his and tour his farm. Um, and r remember, we had a mission to find the yummiest, freshest, most local food in Simsbury, and we accomplished that mission. So maybe at home you can start growing organically, eating locally, or even come down here to support Hall's farm and get a CSA share. Or, you know, just go to the farm market, farm stand, and eat locally. Remember, local food is full of flavor and eating local food is eating seasonally. Um, and local food has more nutrients and local food supports local economy. Local food benefits the environment and local food promotes a safer food supply. Local growers can tell you how the food was grown. I'm Aubrey Bailing and I'm Betsy Kellogg. Now you know your farmer and now you know your food. Eat local! This is Aubrey Balin reporting from a tractor at Hall's Farm. Mr. Duck, what do you think of Betsy? Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.